With virtual learning comes the concern that some students may fall behind, lacking that one-on-one -on -one attention and stimulation that they need. All this week, with a team of journalists from across the country, we're exploring help for students and their families who've been set back most by the pandemic. Jacqueline Powell discovered a group of teenagers launched in Los Angeles, now virtually tutoring students from across the world. Great job, everyone. So when Madison Kim's school in Virginia went virtual this spring, the now fourth grader felt the same as most her age. I was really sad when I couldn't meet my friends because of COVID. Um, I was super bored. Her mom saw a post online about the COVID-19 project, emphasis on teen, a group of mostly high school students offering free tutoring and summer camp-like activities for elementary schoolers online. She just actually said, Okay, let's go into um, Zoom. And I'm like, wait, what? I went into the class and we were making a craft. And I'm like, oh gosh, this is actually super fun. Almost every day since, Madison picks out a new activity or study area. Now I'm not really bored anymore because I do different activities all day. She's learning from volunteer teen mentors who live all across the country. So the next problem that we want to look at is tutors like Leong Jimenez from Dallas. I think it's so important for them to keep busy and have someone to look up to, especially since they're stuck at home. She tutors first through fifth graders in science, math, and English. And they just tell me what homework they need help with or what type of problems they're looking for. I see progress both in the work that they do and just like how they're feeling, which I think is the most important. The COVID-19 Project's founders, high school seniors Sarah Shapiro and Sky Leventhal, have recruited more than 250 teen mentors like Leong to work with the more than 800 students. I definitely did not expect it to be this big. I don't think Sarah really did either. They launched the project in May from their home in L.A., reaching out to schools and lower socioeconomic areas across the U.S. where families may not be able to pay for tutoring or access camps or after-school programs. But especially focusing in more of sort of like inner city schools. And then we also reached out to a lot of foster care programs and kids that are in homeless shelters because we wanted to make sure that they're getting accessibility to these programs as well. As the word grew, so did their program program offerings. With students now signing in from 11 different countries, they can learn in different languages. <laughs> the girls say they measure the program's success through email feedback forms from parents, but they admit there's one big barrier as they try to reach students most in need. What we need for students to be able to access is a device and Wi-Fi, um, and unfortunately that's the one thing that we can't really overcome because we don't have any funding for our project. So for now, now they plan to stick to providing programming, at least through the end of 2020. And as these two prepare to move on to college. What we wanted to show was, hey, if we were able to achieve this as teenagers in our community, this is something that you can set up on the local level in your community as well. The founders admit there have been some challenges starting out, so they created an executive board made entirely of teenagers to help with things like outreach, recruiting tutors, session topics, and the website. The teens say they consulted a few of their teachers when they were designing the project, but for the most part, it was entirely put together without any adult help. They say they have faced some skepticism for that very reason, but to keep a high standard of tutoring that compares to paid certified programs, they say they have a rigorous application, interview, and training process. They also do audits of the mentors' Zoom lessons, randomly popping in and reviewing their sessions. Back to you. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you very much. All week, we're going to be bringing you stories as part of this project right here on KXAN, like how Cooking School has transformed its business model to fill the gap with virtual learning. That's tomorrow morning on KXAN News Today. Online now, pandemic pass or fail, solutions for education equity, the digital investigative project. Check out our latest work, interactive data features, and a behind the scenes video about why we're tackling this topic. Explore stories from our team of journalists across the nation by location or by topic. Plus, resources about the solutions we're discovering and ways you can join the conversation. It's all online now. Just search for Pandemic Pass or Fail on our homepage.